Hello everyone and welcome back to my Air Hauler 2 career in X-Plane 11. In this video I'm going to give more of a summary of a whole bunch of flights, sort of a progress report, instead of focusing on a specific flight like I did in the first video. So we're starting off where I left off in the first video. We are at a small airport on the coast of California and I need to reposition it to Healdsburg Regional Airport, or Municipal Airport, I forget which one. K-H-E-S is where we needed to go with my little Cessna 172. We're not carrying any cargo, but the closest job I could find to here was in Healdsburg, so that's where we're headed. And there's a bit of cloud cover, and that made it interesting. I did this during a live stream, and so that's why I've cut out the audio, because the audio was complicated. I was listening to Apollo 11 audio, because this was actually flown during the anniversary of Apollo 11. And so you can see here me flying uh, beneath the clouds. I'm still basically doing VFR plus GPS in order to navigate. And because we had to get past the coastal range and Healdsburg is sort of in the middle of a valley, I had to do a few loops in order to uh, kill altitude in order to safely get to it. But here we are lining up with things. Now the scenery right now is just why I downloaded through Ortho 4XP. Not particularly good zoom level, usually 15, 16, 16 in the better areas, 15 otherwise. And so it's very muddy and all. But more recently, after the flights that I flew in this video, I got Fork Boys US ortho photos for the California area, which I'm going to be flying in a lot since that's where I'm starting out as we land here at KHES. So, yeah, it'll look a lot better later on, thankfully. Uh, here after that landing, I'm checking the condition of my plane, and we can see an overhaul needed there. Uh, so this is part of the reality expansion pack for the Cessna 172, though we're not going to be dealing with that for very long because I'll be upgrading my plane and leaving the Cessna 172 to an AI pilot in Air Hauler 2. But I'm checking my flight performance. It was a, apparently a good landing, but a very short flight time. Now I can pick up my goods, which was 822 pounds of clothing that I will be delivering to my main home port at Marysville in the Central Valley close to Yuba City. So that is what I'm picking up here. The job fee is 4,900. And with 822 pounds of clothing, it does sort of overload the Cessna 172, as you can see. With the reality expansion pack, we also have this mass imbalance chart. So I just take a peek at that. Doesn't seem bad, uh, but don't know about, well, if we can get off the ground, we can get off the ground, right? So. Here we go, uh, trying to get off the ground. Apologies for not having the engine audio. Hopefully in future videos I'll have that. But there were certain logistical matters about recording separately during a stream instead of just using the stream recording. It's complicated. Anyway, so here we go off to Marysville. We did take off successfully and onto the clouds, but we're going to be landing in the Central Valley and the Central Valley just doesn't have clouds in the season. It's just pretty much cloudless, I know. Uh, yep. It's actually pretty depressing, <laughs> but I know blue skies are supposed to be cheerful or something, at least according to the song, but uh, I like a few clouds in the midst of those blue skies. They don't have to be gray, they just have to be there. Anyway, uh, so here we go, uh, crossing some more mountains here, and of course, uh, about uh, keeping about 5,000 feet, that right now 4,500 so, and there are valleys with various populations in the midst of them. And so I get to take a look. And finally, we make it to the Central Valley here. And I think that's I-5, Interstate 5, that we're looking at right there. And then I am lining up with the airport at Marysville, which again is my home port. This is where I have my home base at, for better or for worse. I mean, it's, a, it's a pretty good choice. Uh, other home bases might be more expensive. So... And you do have to pay like a monthly thing for the upkeep of your home base. So the, if you try to set up your first home base at SFO, it's going to be pretty costly. And so there's a nice compromise. It's not a small airport. I mean, you're not, not going to land any airliners at it, but it's good enough for the time being. That was a little bit of a problematic touchdown, wasn't it? But anyway... Continuing on in the same live stream, I decided that I would upgrade my plane because we have this job for delivering sun cream, which was reasonably lucrative. It's better than the previous uh, mission, but 713 pounds seems a little bit much, especially after we were overloaded in the last flight. But the last flight was a short flight compared to the next one, so 
I decided to look for a better plane. And I also have some money to work with because I started on medium difficulty, so I had a million dollars, and the Cessna did not take most of that. So we can immediately get a second plane, which means that I can hire an AI pilot to then take care of the Cessna. And the AI pilot will have to be assigned jobs, though. The AI pilot won't go on jobs on his or her own. That's important. But trying to figure out which one is best, uh, I decided not to lease. And actually, in retrospect, I sort of regret that. Leasing is a reasonable deal. But I bought the Aerobasque Velocity V-Twin because it has a nice interior, to be honest, and it's an interesting plane. They were, I mean, the Pilatus P6, PC6 would have been probably a good deal in terms of the loads it can carry. And there are some other possibilities there. But uh, yeah, we'll go with the cute one for now. So here I go with the Velocity V-Twin doing my type rating. And that is required if you don't have a type rating for that plane yet. So it's just very simple. It's going to be taking off and landing at the same airport, but they'll give some simple directions along the way, like uh, turn to this heading, go to this altitude, that sort of thing. Nothing at all complicated. So I do what they ask without any problems and uh, get a good look at the area. It's a very calm, soothing flight. They were all pretty calm, soothing flights. But anyway, we uh, do the type rating. I do not line up with the runway as well as I should, really. Uh, I'll improve. Uh, I need to become more rigorous ahead of the new Microsoft Flight Sim coming out. So I've been very lax lately. But, yeah, anyway, we are landing here. And that will complete the mission. And then I can proceed to deliver sun cream to Fallon Naval Air Station in Nevada. That's the goal. It's uh, KNFL, easy to remember. And I'm being very gentle here. I guess I want extra points on this type rating or something. There we go. The canard does sort of complicate things. Also the fact that there's a rear wing plane that doesn't have flaps, right? So some of the landings are going to be a little bit interesting, especially when I'm carrying a load. Anyway, I passed the flight test and you can see the criteria that they judge you by. Uh, in theory. I haven't failed one yet, so I'm not sure, but so we can proceed to this flight to uh, Fallon Naval Air Station carrying sun cream, which is sort of appropriate. I feel like that makes a whole lot of sense to be delivering sun cream to Nevada. And yep, that is the parameters of the flight. I get some extra fuel. There's dialogue to confirm the course. I don't know if I showed all these dialogues in the previous video. There's this one to tell you what to load the craft with. Now that's one difference between Air Hauler 2 with X-Plane 11 and what I was familiar with with FS Passengers. FS Passengers had better integration and it'd load the plane for you and adjust the mass and all that business. Air Hauler 2 doesn't seem to do that in X-Plane 11, so that's a bit of an extra hassle. Anyway, uh, here I'm taking a look at the plane, especially as uh, somebody asked about its tendency to pitch up uh, when taking off and whether <laughs> we were uh, busting the propellers as a result. But in X-Plane 11, if you scrape the propellers, you really do break the propellers. So I was just taking a look at the gear placement and given the placement of the gear, I made a case that it could probably handle a fairly good pitch up on takeoff because they're so close to the propellers and they are pretty long landing gear. Anyway, so just taking a look around on our way, of course, we're crossing the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, we didn't get a very good look at Lake Tahoe, but that's Reno right there. With an awkward, tall autogen building in the middle of nowhere, I'm pretty sure that's just an error. Unless Reno really does have one single really tall skyscraper. But, yep, another view of the Reno area. A little bit stuttery, but again, uh, this is during a live stream. And I have since made some optimization efforts. And here we are landing at Fallon Naval Air Station. So we delivered a sun cream, make about $7,500. And that still makes it seem like we're chugging along and we're not going to get anywhere. But that's where the leasing of aircraft comes in. I think leasing is a much better idea because it frees up these other aircraft for the AI pilots to fly while you're flying. And so while I'm making 10000 or so, let's say, if we get a better aircraft, 
uh, then they can be flying missions with 5,000. It's a little bit of management, but ultimately we could be talking in the same amount of time making much more money. So, so while I show off the going doors here, part at Fallon Naval Air Station, I also explain the AI pilot functionality. You can see the one pilot I've already hired to handle the Cessna 172, Rosie Mallon. And these are other pilots that are available, their monthly salaries, and also their maximum takeoff weight. They are limited by their rank. So they have all sorts of ranks that they can earn. And also they have type ratings themselves. You can pay for them to take a new type rating test if necessary. And so uh, Rosie Mallon is currently flying some sun cream. Well, sun cream is apparently very popular these days. And so that was the mission that she's handling. And she also has skills. You can take a look at all those skills that provide bonuses for various things. I don't know how that all works out. I haven't double checked whether it actually does something with those bonuses. I'm not sure. You can also open factories apparently. And I don't know about this yet because I can't afford any. I don't know what that how that works out, but you can see, uh, pick one of your bases, and I only have one right now, and you can select products to make, like avionics there, and uh, it didn't show you the drop-down menu, uh, the OBS didn't capture that. So that is a thing that can be done. Anyway, uh, next slide, like I said, is to NV-74, and we're carrying cleaning products, and 1,016 pounds of it, and so it's just a flight within Nevada, which frankly isn't always the most inspiring scenery ever. Uh, if we lean towards the Sierra Nevada, it'd be better, but uh, we do get to avoid uh, Nevada test and training range there. Uh, so, yay. Uh, but anyway, here we're taking off. And I mean, maybe we're sort of in with the military. I mean, considering we're delivering to a naval air base or naval air station. I don't know how naval you can be in the middle of Nevada. I don't know what the rules about that are. But anyway, uh, well, it's uh, desert, desert is sort of a sea in a way. And there it is in all of its glory. There are some uh, little patches of water in the midst of uh, Nevada here. And the uh, landscape isn't completely without variance, thankfully, thanks to photo scenery. If this was the stock scenery, it would have been painful, that's for sure. Uh, I did get to follow a road there. I forget which uh, road that is, but there we are. And here we are skirting the Nevada test range, I think. And I'm looking around for anything suspicious, you know, but uh, nothing too convincing. And ultimately we made it to our destination here. I don't, I don't remember the name of the town, but there's the airport NV-74. And uh, it just, I have no idea which airport it is. Someday I'll remember. They needed a lot of cleaning products, that's all I know. So here we go, and oh, I'm a little bit off there. Uh, well, okay, that's a good enough touch. Uh, well, as long as the game is satisfied. So, air hauler to, oh, I'm all over the place. Oh, I'm not slowing down very well either. Uh, quickly turn to the taxiway, and safe. <laughs> Uh, that was awkward. All right, so anyway, delivery made, but here at NV-74, there isn't exactly a job available, so we're going to have to relocate again. And the further away we get from our home bases, the harder it is to find good jobs. But generally, you want to end up at a fairly large airport, and this is not one of those. Hey, it said the landing was smooth. Yep. Well, it doesn't really take into account how much you're swerving on the runway, I suppose. So, uh, we needed to go from NV-74 to 38CA, and I was going to pick up that contract for DVDs. Now, one thing I didn't notice was how close the deadline for that contract with DVDs is. And so, I don't think we ultimately are able to do that. And off we go. This wasn't all in the same stream, by the way. Uh, I ended the stream at the landing at KNFL, and then this is a second stream. So here we are crossing the Sierra Nevadas. Actually, the bulk of them are in front of us. But uh, I think right in front there is Death Valley. So, well, it's very definitely a valley. And I want to get a good look at it, but it was very misty out. 
And I don't know if this is like the heart of Death Valley. I really should have consulted the maps a little bit better beforehand. But this is certainly a valley and it looks pretty, pretty dastardly. I mean, there's a lot of flow in it though. Anyway, but you would expect that because there's mountains surrounding the valley. But anyway, we continue on and ultimately there's the Sequoia National Forest to our right. I think we cross over China Lake as well. This is not China Lake, but yep, reasonably scenic route. Not the most scenic that I'll be taking in California, I expect, but still pretty good. I wish the Sequoias were really Sequoia girth or height, but they're just the regular tree models. And here we are landing at 38 CA, which is just north of Bakersfield. So that's about where we are, relocating to pick up a job. But anyway, that is the first progress report in my Air Hauler 2 career. I won't necessarily include all the flights that I do, uh, because that might get tedious after a little bit. But I will continue bringing progress reports, and I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.